When everything goes right and you've got blue skies, 12 knots on the quarter, and a following sea, life can feel pretty good. That's a very official looking fish station, bud. Yeah. But if adventure is what you're after, then you need those experiences where the wind shifts forward of the beam, where the seas become dangerous. Set your expectations just for, like, survival. And where one obstacle after another keeps you from reaching your destination. Not good. When we first bought our Fixer Upper sailboat, we dreamt of sailing across oceans and anchoring in perfect lagoons. Now, as it turned out, that's not exactly what happened. But what we got instead was an adventure more epic than we ever could have imagined. They've been coming this way for a while. Let's start going the important stuff. Boatyard day 14. Spirits are a little bit low. There's termite damage all throughout this bulkhead. That's all right, buddy. That's okay. Hey guys, so this is the third video of our recap series where we're telling the story of us from the very beginning uh, over the course of four episodes. So yeah, if you haven't seen the first one yet, make sure you go watch that first before watching this one. Now in real time, we are getting ready to hunker down for winter here in De Marin Turga Trace in Turkey. And we thought this would be the perfect time to dive into our big picture story like never before. <laughs> so we hope you guys enjoy it. Now in last week's episode, we sailed from Isla Mujeres, Mexico, around the Western Caribbean and back to the south coast of Cuba, where we finally found the tropical off-grid experience that we'd been looking for. Por la casa. Okay. <laughs> from there, our goal was to sail south and transit the Panama Canal before crossing the Pacific to French Polynesia. In this episode, we begin in Grand Cayman, where we were hoping to experience some of the best free diving in the world on our way to Panama. Okay guys, and then uh, welcome to the um, ex-USS Kitty Wake here in the Cayman Islands. As we've gotten more comfortable with free diving, I've started to experiment with swimming with no fins, torpedoing down to the sandy bottom of the ocean floor and getting to stand up and look around, surrounded by blue with nothing but a mask and snorkel, is totally mind-blowing to me. And then that feeling of floating up to the surface, it's the closest I'll ever get to flying. After spending two months in Grand Cayman, it was time for us to continue on our journey toward the Panama Canal. Our next destination would be the island of Providencia. So we got busy preparing ourselves and the boat for what would be our longest passage to date. Are you having fun, bud? Oh yeah. The laundry in Cayman was about $50 for a load. Two huge loads, but I thought I would just get some exercise in instead today. Our main challenge on this passage is having to sail through waters known for piracy. Piracy, meaning attacks against vessels while underway, is actually extremely rare in most parts of the world. But the extensive shallows east of Nicaragua, known as the Nicaraguan Bank, is one of the few places in the world where piracy is still a very real concern. In this area, there has been at least one incident of piracy every year for the past five years. The most common kind of attack in this area is by panga. Most yachts report that they were approached by one or two pangas asking for food. After receiving the food, the pangas would stalk the yacht from a short distance until more pangas could arrive and eventually 20 to 30 men would attack and board the yacht. These types of attacks are made possible by the Nicaraguan bank, which extends 100 miles offshore, far from any law enforcement, and is full of islands that provide overnight shelter for these relatively small boats. The other type of attack, which is less common, is carried out by large fishing trawlers. These attacks generally occur further offshore beyond the range of smaller pangas and consist of the trawler ramming the yacht until the yacht submits out of fear of sinking and allows the trawler's crew aboard. Our strategy for dealing with piracy was to try and avoid the problem area altogether by sailing 70 miles further offshore than any of the reported incidences. 
Although this may sound like an obvious solution, the strong easterly trade winds, fast flowing current, and large seas in this area make sailing east a serious challenge and adds a significant amount of time to the passage. But for us, an additional day or two of pounding into waves and putting more stress on Atticus was all worth reducing our risk of pirate attack. You off to bed, bud? Yep, it is nap time for me. Should I turn the tri light off? Sure. We might not be the only boat running dark in these waters tonight, so we're definitely increasing our risk of colliding with another boat. But being visible to pirates for miles around is something we have to avoid at all costs. Hey bud. Yeah. There's a boat off on the horizon. You want to come talk about yeah. what it looks how like? Big, how big does it look? It's kind of a, it, it's a big-ish like trawler. They've been coming this way for a while. We couldn't outrun it. We couldn't outweather it. Like they're going right into the wind right now. So like the way I see it is like if they were to be like pirates of opportunity, like hope that they see Atticus, that it's small and just keep going on about their business, you know? Should I start hiding our camera gear and stuff? Um, yeah, I'd say we put the laptop like way back there, you know? I'll get the bad GoPro and bad iPod out. Yeah, and can do we have a some cash that's like our sacrifice cash? Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, let's start stowing stowing the important stuff and then get the sacrificial stuff out. Still haven't changed course. Mm -hmm. And if they do like try to board us, should I just be here with you or do you want me to be hiding down below? Um probably hiding. But let's get to work. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna try and see if we can't go a little bit faster with the engine on. Alright, then. We got our sacrificial stuff just in the cubby right there, ready to grab. Uh, this is the stuff that we want to hide. So if they come, maybe we can just stick it in the cockpit way back there. Yeah, way, way back, back there. Where right. the cash? I have the sacrificial cash behind the painting. Okay, cool. And then we don't have any real cash. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <laughs> They're almost directly behind us. They were literally coming right at us for a little while. I've got the engine going just about full throttle, so they haven't still haven't turned. So cross your fingers. Yeah, they uh, they haven't altered course at all, and they're they're almost like completely out of sight. Fingers crossed, we don't see many more of those guys. All right, well, I'm going off watch. Desiree is coming up. Time for me to go to bed. But before I do. I think it's time for us to switch the Genoa for the jib. Now there's a good reason that just about nobody uses Hankon sails anymore for offshore sailing. They are a huge pain, but we just didn't have the money to install a furler back in Key West. Turn 20 degrees to port. 20 to port. Years from now, I don't think I'm going to remember the fear and anxiety from this passage. What I am going to remember is the pull of the tiller in my hand and the salt spray in the air as we race through the channel markers into Providencia under sail and the overwhelming sense of pride after overcoming such a daunting challenge. Woo. All right, we're in the wind shadow. <laughs> nice, buddy. Oh, we made it. That was crazy. That was crazy. <laughs> Welcome to Providencia. In our time in Providencia, I came to realize that one of my favorite things about sailing is that unlike a typical tourist, we have the opportunity to really get to know a place, to truly live there, if only for a little while. We snooped around town yesterday trying to figure out where we can get water. Um, there's not a whole lot of fresh water on the island. 
but we did find out that there is like a small uh, hotel that's got its own dock neck pretty close to us and they do sell water to cruisers. So I'm gonna bring our jerry cans over there and see if I can't uh, strike a deal. Hi, my name is Jordan. I spoke with you on the phone yesterday. Uh, I was wondering if I might be able to buy some water from you. Chelsea. 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 <laughs> Chelsea. Hey Chelsea, can you carry this? You can do it? Okay, you got it. You got it. Be strong. <laughs> Ready? Nice. <laughs> got a nice helper, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, she's really uh, taking a lot of the load. Uh-huh. <laughs> Man, that process will make you really appreciate fresh water. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> With hurricane season once again fast approaching, we were in a rush to get to the protection of Panama. In last week's episode, we discussed how the Rio Dulce in Guatemala is known as the best hurricane hole in the Caribbean. But Panama is another really good option. It's so close to the equator that it is almost unaffected by hurricanes altogether. Ever since we bought Atticus, We've been wanting more than anything to get to the Panama Canal and then cross the Pacific. It's just this, I don't know, kind of like rite of passage, I feel like, for sailors. And I kind of forgot that we're actually getting to where we set out to go. And uh, I think if I were to be able to have a conversation with Desiree from five years ago, I'd be really impressed with myself. <laughs> Two nautical miles away, it's 5.45, getting some first light, and I'm just getting ready to wake Jordan up so he can get ready to head into Bogus del Toro. Morning. Morning. Man, you can smell land. Yeah, I know, like an hour ago, I was like, what is that? <laughs> I wonder what that smell is, you know? To me, it smells like, like wet dirt. Yeah, it does. This smells kind of sweet. Yeah, it does smell sweet. Like a bakery. Yeah. Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> uh -huh. At this point, we had spent years trying to get Atticus into good shape, but the more that we sailed her, the more problems we discovered. And some of those problems were pretty serious, so the project list continued to grow. We had seven months until we wanted to begin our Pacific crossing, so that means that we had seven months to make sure that Atticus was prepared to sail across the world's largest ocean. Yeah, I think our biggest goal for our time in Panama this time around, now that we've kind of struggled through one refit and shakedown cruises and, you know, just the trauma <laughs> of like figuring out how to have a happy marriage on a boat and not sink and yeah. go broke. <laughs> I think our biggest challenge here is going to be just to not get overwhelmed, not get too stressed out and try to be graceful and loving with ourselves about you know, taking every single day, one step at a time. Not, and just appreciate our situation. Yeah, look at this, know? like, yeah. we need to... Like, not forget how beautiful this place is. Yeah. So... Yeah, I think we've come a long way since Key West. <laughs> yeah, I think we really have. So frustrating, it's, we've got so much to do, and I keep making so little progress each day. This side's a little too tall. I just keep coming up against walls with every project that I start. Oh, oh man, that thing is gross. <laughs> Not good. It feels terrible disassembling the boat. Yes, that's all you Now it's good time to get to work. Wait, wait, okay. Got it. Oh boy. Are you okay? Yeah. We're just destroying the boat right now. Ocas del Toro might be a beautiful place, but hauling out in the middle of the jungle is less than ideal, to say the least. 
There were hordes of fire ants on the ground, swarms of noceums constantly biting us, and the heat was absolutely oppressive. But we were able to make some serious progress on the boat. Woo! It is hot in here. How's it feel over there, bud? Oh, it's like vacation. Boatyard day 14. Spirits are a little bit low. It just doesn't seem like it should be this difficult, right? Long story short, we're supposed to be splashing right now. Well, we made it, bud. We made it. We've got the masks up. We're back in civilization. We didn't murder each other. So I think no. we're doing pretty good. <laughs> Chinese health authorities are still working to identify the virus behind a pneumonia outbreak in the central city of Wuhan. At least 59 people are believed to have been sickened by the new virus, the World Health Organization says. It's the first CDC airport health screenings since the Ebola virus six years ago. Almost immediately after we got out of the boatyard, the pandemic began to really take off. It's easy to forget just how much uncertainty there was in the early stages of the pandemic. <laughs> In Panama, all non-essential businesses were shut down, and people were only allowed to leave their homes for two hours a day every other day. And that included people living on boats. And in fact, one time when we were on our way to stretch our legs at the marina, we were pulled over by the water police and told to return to our boat. Being cooped up on the boat for days at a time was driving us absolutely insane, and we found ourselves arguing a lot. Obviously, this is a hard situation, and I've been taking this really wrong attitude with me through all of it that like if I feel angry and upset toward you like there must be something legitimate about it and I'm just realizing that that's just not the case right now I need to take responsibility for those feelings and not punishing you for them I appreciate you saying that I think you really need to recognize like it's because of the situation like we are already on a small boat but you in particular are the kind of person who has so much energy and you really need other people and you need to talk and you need to like express yourself. Like, I think it's really important for you to not dump that on me. Yeah. You need to get rid of that energy in yeah. a healthy way. I think we've got to kind of sit down and come up with new coping strategies for how we can be okay living on this small boat together and, and give each other the space that we need. We also had concerns over whether months of no income for the local population would eventually lead to an increase in crime and civil unrest. So we just decided to say goodbye to civilization for a while. The Bocas del Toro region is a massive area, home to thousands of islands and peninsulas, making it very easy to get lost in the extensive backcountry. We stocked up on as many provisions as we could and set sail for the most remote parts of the region. Now, at the time, all boat movement was prohibited, but we were able to get permission to take on diesel at a nearby fuel dock. Si después uh, necesitamos diesel, uh, hemos oído que el único sitio que tiene diesel ahora es Red Frog. Podemos ir de después de allá a, a Red Frog. Okay. And after filling up on diesel, we just sort of slipped away into the watery jungle of Bocas del Toro. Man, it is so nice to be in a new place and to just be in a bay with our little boat and nothing around but mangroves and water again. Oh, I'm just feeling so much less stressed out being out here. I feel like I didn't really realize how kind of wound up I've been uh, just with our boat projects and the uncertainty and added stress of the coronavirus and all the restrictions and our movement back in Bocas. It just, I don't know, I was getting more and more closed, I feel like, and kind of in like self-protect mode. <laughs> I finally feel like I'm coming alive again. So I'm sure you know, but it is now winter. And I don't know about you, but I feel like every winter for the last couple years, someone in our family gets COVID and it just spreads through us like wildfire. But there are now treatments for COVID-19. So if you or someone you love is at risk of developing severe symptoms from COVID-19, there is something you can do. And that brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Ada. Ada has a free questionnaire to see if you're eligible for COVID-19 treatment. The questionnaire is super easy to use and it's completely free. Plus it can connect you with a clinician within just two hours any day of the week. So if you want to be prepared this winter season, then click the link in the description to learn more. Morning, bud. What you doing? Filling up our water filtration device. The way that we've been doing 
drinking water is we fill up our jerry cans with rainwater. It's not really filtered at all, so there is dust in the water. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've started using this material as kind of a pre-filter. We're using a pillowcase and then we put a little bit of chlorine into them. What this thing does is it takes out the chlorine before we drink it. How are we doing on water? Yeah, we're a little bit low. I'm hoping that it rains real good so that we can fill up because yeah. if not, you know, we've only got a couple of days worth of water left. So if it rains, then we, we should be able to stay out here. I mean, you know, maybe a month. Should we do a rain dance? Yeah. All right. This is a very traditional rain dance. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's really good. I'm pretty sure it's gonna rain today. Yeah. All right, to kick off the day, we're gonna hop in the dinghy and kind of explore these little mangrove islands and do some snorkeling, see what we find. There's a storm coming our way, so might be time to go back to Attic and collect some rainwater. hardly walked for weeks, so it felt so good to be able to walk all we wanted on the completely uninhabited beaches without having to worry about the authorities or anybody else. I feel like the astronaut yeah, I know. after coming back from like a couple months in space. I know. I haven't moved around much. I know, it's weird. <laughs> Aside from collecting rainwater, spearfishing was a great way for us to supplement our limited provisions while hiding out in the jungle. This area isn't necessarily known as a great place for spearfishing, but we were generally able to get a couple of pan-sized fish whenever we went out. Official looking fish station, bud. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the fancy fish fillet table. <laughs> Con consisting of a trash bucket and an old cutting board. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we got three small fish for dinner tonight. So hey, it's meat. I'm excited about that. It's like a coconut curry stew. Good job, bud, with the dinner. Thank you. Thank Good you. Good job with the fish. Thank you. Good team. Boom. Good. Dream team. <laughs> well, it is a gorgeous day today, but we are running a little bit low on provisions. So we're going to hop in the dinghy and go for a little dinghy adventure. The market is about seven miles away, and that's a lot longer than we usually go on little shit, especially for groceries. But it's a beautiful day today, and it's in protected water, so we figured we'd kind of use it as an excuse to explore a little bit and uh, stock up on some fresh provisions. All right, good job there, Captain. Oh, thank you. <laughs> all right, bud. We gonna be able to get on a plane with all this stuff? We'll find out. <laughs> we, we went a little, a little we crazy. went a little wild. Oh, man. Okay, here we go. 
Come on, baby. Come on. It want, it's thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We yeah. did it. Oh, that's a huge relief. <laughs> we wouldn't have been back until it was dark out, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Over the course of several months, we explored every nook and cranny of the archipelago and found several spots that weren't even in the cruising guide. It was such a cool time getting to know an area that so few sailors had probably experienced. And because of COVID, we were always the only sailboat around. Now, of all the amazing experiences that we had during our time off grid, the highlight was definitely getting to meet this young indigenous kid named David. So I'm just making breakfast down below and <laughs> cracking up because Jordan is uh, trying to have a conversation. And usually I help him, but I was like, just, just try it, just handle it. It's really funny and amusing for me down here. Desiree's making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're killing it, buddy. I'm not killing it. <laughs> Toronja. Si quiero, ahorita lo traigo. Uh, sure. Cu cuánto cuesta? Por uno le daré diez centavos. Queri queremos, uh -huh. queremos dos. No quieren bastante. He says you don't want more? Mm -mm. Well, but it might just not be worth it for him. Yeah. Okay, cinco? Dale, cinco. Si? Okay. Cinco por... 50. Nice. Wow. Bastante fruta, no? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Acá está la caña que le hablé. Ah, oh, yes, nice. Yes. So this is sugar cane? ¿Y cómo se right? come? Pasa, pasa un cuchillo. Un le cuchillo? Okay. Así va a venir que en blanco y ya no hay que dejar, hay que dejar de pelar. Mastica aquí. Oh, okay. Chúpalo. Bite it. Suck it. Yeah. <laughs> ¿Te Así gusta? Mismo. Así se come. Uh -huh. ¿Te gusta? <laughs> Me gusta. <Yeah. laughs> it's like it's like sweet tree bark. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 50, 50, 50. Cuara. So un, un dolor 50. Sí. ¿Sí? 450. Oh, he's saying each is 50 cents. Oh, he's saying each is 50 cents. Uh-huh. Pero antes dijiste 10. Pero cambié de plan. ¿Ah, sí? ¿Cambié de plan? Porque pensé que era más pequeño. Ah, okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. How did you say that? Cambio de plan? The plan change. Cuatro dólares, entonces. Okay. El plan de cambio. <laughs> Hola chicos. Hey, ¿Qué hacen? Hola. Hola. <laughs> Estamos pescando. Ah, sí. sí. Pescamos Grande. con esto. Oh, ah, yeah. camarón. We got mm -hmm. we got some shrimp and wow. some little fish. Ah, qué bien. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he oh, caught he one right when we got here. In the caico. That's yeah, funny. that was actually the coolest part uh -huh. is he would he would have to catch the bait. Uh-huh. Es muy difícil agarrarlo. <laughs> Wow! Yeah! <laughs> Qué bien! Bien hecho! <laughs> yeah. Oh! No, se me fue! <laughs> ¿Cómo se dice? Uh, pesca un, cuando. Pica. Pica. Okay. Pica? Necesitamos pica. Sí, pero aquí no pica. <laughs> ¿Qué significa yeah? Yeah. Uh, it's similar KC. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Adiós, Jordan. Okay. Hasta Adiós, mañana. amigo. Hasta mañana. Gracias por todo. Hasta mañana, nos vemos. Hasta mañana. Sí. Okay, well, it's the end of the day and David came over and surprised us and he brought his big grande bote, the big cayuca, and he offered to take us ashore so we can go for a walk. <laughs> this is my first time in one of these. Yeah? Uh-huh. Oh, long way down. I think that's for my butt. Yeah, I'm gonna straddle you. Oh, you are? Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Ready? 
Listo. <laughs> It's not very stable. I think it's because the bottom is totally round. I mean, it's just a dugout tree, you know? It's like a pure core ab work. <laughs> yeah, right. Wow, this is cool. You gotta be careful with your head. Mm -hmm. Oh, gracias. <laughs> you think you're fit? I wonder. <laughs> I really wonder. Cabe? I mean, it's. Más o menos? I'm not going to hurt my toes. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These boots are awesome. <laughs> when you think of hiking in the States, you think of very well maintained trails, right? Like clear, nice little flat bit of dirt you walk on. I don't think that happens in the jungle <laughs> unless you give a huge amount of effort and expense because there's just too much life. I mean, look, this is what it looks like. And he's chopping stuff as he's walking, you know? I mean, what are you gonna do with all this stuff? Oh boy. And I think this, pipe here is the drinking water that runs to their house. Oh, cool. Yeah, oh, here's the pump. It. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so they just have like a like a mesh. Uh-huh. And then the waterfall water goes on to that into the barrel. Barrel fills up and then it's just gravity fed. So there's no electricity, no pump and they have running fresh water. That's awesome. It's very cool. Whew. Whew. I think uh our brave captain is in better shape than Desiree and I. <laughs> this is, to get, it's winding me. What do you think, bud? Yeah, I'm, I'm working up a sweat. ¿Y te cansa o no? No? ¿No te sientes cansado? No. So I just learned when David came and brought us Buchu this morning, he had to come here first. <laughs> All the way here, <laughs> just to get us. Muchas gracias por a Buchu, amigo. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Has a new meaning now. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna real quick just run into the jungle, <laughs> grab some bananas for my friends. So David has been showing us all the different species of uh, plantain and bananas back here. And so I was asking him normally, you know, what he and his family eat for dinner. And he was saying, usually they eat some kind of buchu, which means like a little banana, some species of it, and then fish. If the money's good, they'll they'll sometimes have rice or beans, but for the most part, yeah, they just eat a bunch of bananas. And then what they catch. <laughs> and what they catch, mm -hmm. yeah. Can you explain what just happened? He just cut down this tree <laughs> yeah. with like one single yeah. swing of the... He's like, Chico, this is how you do it. <laughs> tree falls down. <laughs> Wow. Es para ustedes, chicos. Sí? Oh, gracias. Wow. wow. Seguro para nosotros? Sí. No para tu familia? No, te amo mucho. Oh, gracias. Man. He's like, do not do baby, what he just did. Baby Indiana Jones. <laughs> if I did what he just did, we'd need no an ambulance. Yeah. <laughs> no corra. No corra. He's like, don't run. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that feels good. So did you come here to, to uh, bathe every day? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is crazy. Like, to us, we're kind of like, you know, feeling like we're doing something almost extreme. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. But this is where he takes a bath. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Think of it, his every single day as a 12 year old and compare that to your life as a 12 year old. Here he goes. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Bien! <laughs> Capitán David! <laughs> ¿Y te recuerdas cómo decir mi nombre es David? Uh -huh. ¿Cómo es? My name is David William. Wow, yeah! Perfecto. Has estado <laughs> practicando, ¿no? Sí. <laughs> Whoa. 
Okay. That toronja is gonna taste really good. <laughs> Give you in. There you go. <laughs> oh, nice! Oh, <laughs> oh uh, gracias. No sabía. Tú eres el hermano de David? Ah, ¿y cómo te llamas? Josué. Josué, mucho gusto. Yeah, it's beautiful, but <laughs> it was man. like a, the best evening ever. <laughs> I know. Gracias. Muchísimas yeah, really. gracias. Yeah. Yeah. Adios. Okay. Adios amigo. That was so cool. That was incredible. <laughs> that was probably. I'm gonna, like start crying like that was yeah. my favorite moment cruising I on know. Atticus like on the one hand they they don't have much right he was saying when they have money they buy rice right that says a lot but on the, on the other hand they've got running water mm -hmm. you know they've got a family that's just like f everyone in the family that we've met is incredible so you know? nice <laughs> and like they're super capable they're able to go out fishing I mean what do you want out of life to have like a happy family, a beautiful place to live, enough food to eat. I mean, it's just, it's kind of mind blowing how, like the lengths that we go to like have enough. And like, I don't know if you could ever have more than they have in some really cheesy sense, you mm -hmm. know? Just such a sweet kid. Yeah. Just so freaking sweet. Yeah. Oh God, <laughs> it's like melting my heart. <laughs> if we ever produce a kid that, gentle and sweet and capable like that's that's the goal right mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Even though our plans had been dramatically affected by COVID, our primary goal was still to cross the Pacific. So once the restrictions back in Bocas were lifted, we headed back to the marina to finish the projects that needed to get done before the crossing. But we soon realized that our remaining projects would take much longer than we initially thought. So we decided to move the boat to Shelter Bay Marina at the entrance to the Panama Canal, where we could have a much easier time getting materials and supplies. Now we had made a lot of friends in Bocas. Give me your hand! <laughs> and as we left, they sailed their own boats with us as far as Isla Veraguas, where we all spent a week together as a last hurrah. Oh man, it's been fun, buddy. Yeah, it's been real good. It's been a, it's been a cool crew to like be locked down. Yeah, yeah. right. Totally. You know, um, yeah. It's funny. We were talking about that today. That like most of this group wouldn't really be here if it weren't for yeah, coronavirus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We would have all yeah. we would have all come and gone and yeah. passed in the yeah. night, and yeah. but we've all been together for a long bloody time. <laughs> yep, yep. Corona. Yeah, yeah. Corona crew, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that evening, as we sailed away and watched the sun set over yet another place that we had come to love, I couldn't help but just go over all of the memories that we'd made and people that we'd met in this beautiful archipelago. And what I still to this day consider to be one of the most underrated cruising grounds in the world. But leaving Bocas del Toro was not the only life-changing event that would happen to us on that trip. Because not long after we arrived in Shelter Bay Marina, we discovered a problem with the boat that was much bigger than any issue we'd faced yet. <sighs> It is not good. The main bulkhead is just super damaged. I actually haven't found any alive termites, but there's termite damage all throughout this bulkhead. So next week in our fourth and final episode of our recap series, we make a very difficult decision. So we're selling Atticus. And our adventure takes a turn into a new direction that we never would have imagined. We want Atticus 2 to be a good home for a family of four, probably for at least the next 10 years. All right, guys. How's it feel? Weird. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this is our new home. I don't know, but there is something 
super magical about just ghosting along in the middle of the ocean. Wow, what a view, bud. Oh my gosh, I'm just so impressed by these beautiful mountains and the crystal clear water. Baby's first time sailing. Isabella, you're a sailor. On the mountain.